Today we're going to make two 8 by 8 inch square pans of chicken divan. And the reason that we're doing this is because my friend Nikki, uh, her husband, has a co-worker whose wife is sick. And she wanted to take over something that they could enjoy without going to all the fuss of making it themselves. In order to get these folks some good food in them and they don't have to worry about making it or going out and buying uh, something, we're going to make them two casseroles of chicken divan. One casserole is going to be baked off this evening for their dinner. One casserole is going to go in the freezer. So in an effort for me to share more freezer banking ideas, we're going to make this chicken divan, which I know some of you have seen me do in the past, but I had to take that video down for copyright issues on the music that I used because I didn't know any better in the very early stages of my channel. go over all the ingredients and then we're going to start building. So what we have is two cans of cream of chicken soup and there is no substitute for this. You can choose to make your own with Magic Mix. You can choose to buy organic. Today I'm using the ingredients that my friend Nikki brought me because I told her if you just bring me the ingredients I'll put this all together for you. She wanted to pay me to do it. I said absolutely not. Please just bring me the ingredients and I gave her a list. So two cans of chicken cream of chicken soup two cups of sour cream, two cups of mayonnaise, and before you all have a heart attack and go, oh my God, that's a lot of sauce, trust me, this is the most delicious casserole ever. I have about three pounds here of shredded chicken. I cooked it in water with some celery, carrot, onion, and a little chicken seasoning, and I just cooked it till it was done, shredded it, good to go. I have about four cups of cheddar cheese, and this is two one pound bags of frozen broccoli florets. I have one bag each in one of these square pans. And we're gonna build our sauce in this pan right here, this dish. So in goes, I'm gonna put half of the sour cream for now and then we're gonna see how it looks. And I'm gonna put half the mayonnaise. And I'm gonna use my handy stir. I have used this in several videos and I have people constantly asking me, what is that tool she's using? I must have one. This is a Rada handy stir. And I can put a link down below where you can get one. Mayonnaise and sour cream in here. This is a rich dish, but it's this is a real throwback to the 60s and 70s. And it's just delicious. This is something that I really only make in my house Oh, honey, what, about once a year, if we're if lucky, that. if that. It's about once a year, maybe. Now, I'm going to take half of this cheese, and I'm just going to eyeball it. I knew that was coming. You can't trust me with cheese. I know. And just get this mixed in there. What's going to happen is when this bakes in the oven, it's going to souffle and it's going to be creamy and luscious and amazing and you're going to love it. Now, let's take this chicken and we're going to divide it evenly. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this sauce know if I can. And we're going to place it as evenly as possible. And of course, I think these pans are too small. Okay, in true Noreen fashion, and for those of you who have been with us any amount of time, you know, what is Rick always saying to me? You need a bigger bowl. I need a bigger bowl. In this case, I needed a bigger pan. So what I did was I just turned um, those two pans into this big bowl. I put the rest of the sauce in there, and we're just going to mix it up. And you know what? It's not really about the layering. It's just about getting all of these ingredients mixed up together. And it's going to be just fine. So, where there's a will, there's a way. And sometimes you just have to make other plans. But don't let it discourage you. If you're new to cooking, I have a lot of, you know, baby cooks out there who write me all the time and tell me that they're having good success with some of my recipes that makes me happy mm -hmm. and this is one of those recipes you're gonna be able to feed your family this for a holiday dinner and they're gonna just you're gonna knock their socks off 
and this is one of those situations where you just adapt and overcome. That's right, because we're humans. We adapt, right? Mm -hmm. You have to. All right. So now <laughs> we can fill these pans up. It seems that all of that fit perfectly into these two pans once it was mixed up together. Just pack it in there. And sometimes when you're making a freezer meal, you need to go about things a little bit differently. Sometimes layering with the broccoli in the bottom and the chicken and then the sauce on top, that leaves a lot of air in your pan and you don't really want that. You want things to be densely packed so that the freezing part doesn't cause a lot of crystallization because crystallization leads to freezer burn. And when you have a lot of crystallization, things don't last as long in your freezer. Bad so, and it does, it, it causes a horrible taste. So we're going to take the remainder of this cheese and we're just going to evenly spread it out on the top. Don't worry about getting it too perfect, like to the edges or anything else, because it's going to spread once it's baked. And really, it's just, it's just a nice little extra. And then the other thing we're going to add, which I forgot to take out of the refrigerator, is a little parm. Just a little handful. Maybe a couple tablespoons on each one. That's it. And you can leave this out. It's totally up to you. But I think it does add a nice flavor. Now I'm going to just sprinkle this with a little of my Sejid Sweet Hungarian Paprika. And you'll notice I did not add any additional salt or pepper or anything because everything in here is really flavorful. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get what I need to prep these to go in the freezer. This is how we're going to package these up. And <clears throat> I am going to go through all of the little pieces that I like to use. Now because I'm making this for someone else to give to someone else, I want it to be abundantly clear how to prepare it and I want to make sure that it gets to where it's going in one piece without any kind of a problem. So this is the one that we're preparing for them to cook tonight. I only put one layer of single, you, you know, regular use foil on there and I also put a piece of chipboard, a piece of cardboard from a clean cardboard box will work as well. I cut it just a bit larger than the base. These are 8 inch pans so I cut an 8 inch square of chipboard. But I have that in my um, in my scrapbooking supplies. So if you don't have chipboard, you can just use the back of a uh, like a pad. If you like a legal pad that's used up, or you can use a clean piece of cardboard, or a double thickness of cereal box cardboard, which is chipboard, just just lighter weight. Just to give support on the bottom. It just gives support on the bottom, so it doesn't sag. You know when you carry it around, and you can see. This is, mm -hmm. this is very helpful. And I know it's kind of long, but... And I prepared a label. This is chicken divan. Cook this one tonight. All the important information. This is to cook it from a thawed state. Preheat it to 350. Remove the foil and parchment. Place on a baking sheet. Bake for 30 minutes until bubbly. And enjoy. So I'm going to move that one out of the way. And then we're going to prepare this one. which is the one that we're going to freeze. And I prepared a label. Freeze this one for later. Okay, parchment uh, right on top. This is a piece of chipboard that I cut right on the bottom. You're going to slip that pan just right on top of that chipboard. And you don't have to do it at that point. You can just do it whenever. Now, because this one is going in the freezer, I'm going to put a double layer of foil on this one. If you have heavy duty foil, then I recommend that you use one layer of heavy duty foil. I don't have any heavy duty foil on hand right now, so a double layer of this is going to be just fine. One gallon Ziploc bag. Now this is where that, and I have a placemat here, so you know, that little piece of chipboard is going to help you get that into this bag. And this will fit inside this bag, I promise. You might have to wrestle with it, but eventually it will go. You just have to tell it who's boss. Mm -hmm. And because I have used a double layer of foil, it's given me a little bit of a challenge, but it's all good.
just slip it right on in there. Perfect. It fits just perfectly to where there really aren't a lot of air pockets in here. Seal it up well. And then take your label. And place it on there. That way they'll know what to do with it when it comes time to bake that off the next time they need a nice hearty meal after a long day of traveling back and forth to the doctors or treatment sessions or what have you. So there you have it. Two delicious chicken divan casseroles ready to go. You can put them both in the freezer. You can make a double batch of this and make four or if you're just two people, you can make one batch, divide this particular thing up into four loaf pans and then you can prepare it for the freezer. Pop it out, stick it in the oven. You can even bake that off in a toaster oven if you wanted to. And you have a nice hot home cooked meal. Bulk cooking is something that is close to my heart. I haven't done it in a very long time and I'm starting to get back into it because it makes so much sense. So that's how you make great chicken divan and uh, make it into a freezer meal. I hope you try it. I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya. For joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you liked what you watched today and I hope that you try it and I hope that you love it. Uh, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time.